Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, we're back out on the road again. So what are we riding today? This is the Free Deer Eden. Yeah, we just had the review of this uh, on Thursday. Sorry that we didn't come out with it on Tuesday, but I was working on the review. So we had the uh, solar eclipse happen on Monday. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get to see that much of it here. I didn't have any special glasses or anything like that. I, um, I did go out riding, however. <laughs> it did get a little bit dark. Not totally, but it did get dark. And um, took it back and then on Tuesday, I did the review of the bike. So if you haven't seen that review, I'll put a link in the uh, description of the video. And at the end of the video too, you can click on it to get there. So how's this bike working out so far? Pretty good, I would say pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely different, it feels different to me. Um, I think the biggest difference is this handlebar is, is a, a bit different than the standard handlebars I'm usually used to. Most of the handlebars are usually flat across, as you know. This one kind of curves towards you. I've had things like the Beach Cruiser and the like have curved handlebars, but this is kind of like narrower, uh, closer in, I should say, kind of closer in. And um, the angle makes it uh, interesting because you're not leaning forward to get to the handlebar. So even though there's no, there's no um, um, extension on the, on the handlebar stem or any type of adjustment on the handlebar stem, doesn't seem to matter that much. All right, I have a car behind me, but I'm gonna make a left turn here, so I'm gonna let him know that. Put my hand out there so he knows. And so, uh, my first initial impression was, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this uh, feel. Yeah, I kinda like it. <laughs> Feels pretty good. The handlebar is actually made by Zoom, so it's got some type of name brand to it at least. So where are we headed today? Well, I figured I'd uh, take the bike out more on the road today instead of, uh, you know, on the testing, sometimes we test it in more of a closed condition on the bike path because we're trying out the uh, hill test and the like. But I figured today we will take it out on the streets a little bit. All right, I get to go first. And um, as you know, this is a torque sensor bike. So I have it currently on the seventh gear out of seven. This is a uh, Shimano Turney on here. And um, have my pedal assist, let's move it up to pedal assist level three, which means as I pedal, the motor will give me a little bit more, a uh, little bit more help. I'm doing about 17.8 uh, miles an hour right now. The thing is, you know, you could go up to 28 miles per hour on this if you pedal fast and hard. But as you know, I don't have the strongest uh, knees or weak, uh, or my leg, which is weak. <laughs> so. It's harder for me to get to that level, of course. Let me, let me pedal hard. Let's, let's move up a little bit here. So I'm pedaling a little bit harder and faster. Let's see what we're doing. We're doing 24, 25, uh, just shy of 26. And then I'm tired out. <laughs> yeah, you've, uh, you've got to part pedal kind of hard to get up to that 28, which, uh, I don't really plan to do. <laughs> so, now a couple things about uh, the review. I think I probably neglected to mention and uh, probably worth mentioning for anyone who's looking to buy the Free Deer Eden or the Free Deer Sega. Uh, well, let's get past this guy. This guy is doing his uh, lawn stuff here. Kind of noisy. Past these folks too. 
Okay, so <laughs> it's always interesting when you pass up uh, people who don't have an e-bike. It always makes me wonder what they think when I'm passing them. But uh, yeah, um, when I first got the bike, uh, the batteries are not fully charged, as you know. Most of the most of the companies will will ship out the batteries semi-charged because it's really not good to leave it in a fully charged state and not know how long it'll be before the bike is sewed, right? So it's not fully charged and it's sent off to you. Now most most bikes they'll usually ask you to charge up the battery before you take it out. It's always a good idea, right? So I, I attempted to charge up the battery and I put the uh, charger on. It's a 3 amp charger that comes with the uh, the bike. And uh, I don't know, maybe within less than five minutes, the uh, battery charger showed green. And as we all know, is when it goes from red to green, uh, the battery should be fully charged. So I said, okay, let's uh, let's let's pull it off and put it on the on the bike, and let's see uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> yep, totally dead. Nothing happened. So I reached out to. Uh, Free deer, and I said, "Hey, uh, what's up with the battery?" And they said, "Oh, you you have to uh, you have to kind of get it going first. I says, "Well, I plugged it in, and you know, in less than five minutes, that thing turned green." He goes, "Well, here's what you need to do." And I didn't know this, and there's really no documentation that tells you to kind of do it this way. They said, "Plug it in. When it turns green within that five minutes or whatever length of time it is, a couple minutes, unplug it, plug it back in again." And if it turns green right away again, unplug it, plug it back in again, <laughs> until that thing finally kicks in and stays on red. Sure enough, yeah, it did. Then it took hours and hours to charge it because it was it was way down there, right? Which is what I expected it to be. It'll it'll take some time to charge up. But I didn't I didn't expect that thing turned greening and having to unplug it several times to get it to finally take. So I asked them, well, you know, why is that? Why, why do you need to do that? And they said, well, you know, it's part of our safety protocol to uh, make sure that the, you know, the batteries stay fresh when you finally get them and start using them. It's kind of a startup thing that they, they have to do. I'd never heard of such a thing before. <laughs> but uh, okay, I, I accept that they, they seem to know that this is gonna happen. So I, I kind of felt that, okay, maybe it should have been in the documentation to kind of tell you that you need to do this. But I'm telling you guys now, all right, if you buy this bike and, um, and you have any issue with that battery charger immediately going from red to green within a couple minutes, unplug it and do what I said. All right, do it a couple of times until it finally stays red and then it will charge fully, okay? So there you go. So when it finally finished and I put the battery in the bike, because I usually, you know, the battery is uh, brand new. It's, you know, I took it off and I usually try to charge it outside of the ba uh, outside of the bike initially. Plugged it into the bike, tried to turn it on, and I got an error message. <laughs> I don't remember what error was it. Was it error 26 or some some type of error message? So once again, I contacted uh, Free Deer. I go, what's this error thing? And I said, oh, that's because it didn't initialize once you charged it. <laughs> Never heard of such a thing. <laughs> so, so what they said is, pull the battery out, plug it back in, okay? And if that doesn't work, do it again. <laughs> and they said, if that even doesn't work, then you, you can actually unplug something on the bottom of the bike, which I was not going to do, of course. So I did that. I pulled out the battery, waited a little bit. You know, they said wait about a minute or so, plug it back in and try again, and, and then it worked. <laughs> so apparently uh, it just didn't take when you plugged it in the first time, but it took on the second time. And then from that point on, it's fine, okay? But again, I had never heard of such a thing before on any battery or any bike uh, that you had to do something like that. But it's it's fine, it's, it's not, uh, not something that would stop me from buying a bike. I mean, it, you just have to know the procedure because of their battery and their uh, their startup procedure when you first get the bike. So I said, okay, <laughs> just have to know it. So again, if you're interested in buying this bike, uh, just know that you might have to do that.
it seems to be more common than we think uh, for these bikes. So there you go. At least uh, at least I mentioned that. Yeah, I forgot to mention that on the review, but um, it, maybe it wasn't the place to put it in the review because you were just talking about how the bike performs and everything, and it does perfectly fine. Um, but it is a startup procedure for their particular batteries, okay? Oh, and also I didn't mention too, is that they do have UL certifications and they're like, uh, read, read their explanation of that on their website. Where am I going here? Let's take a left. I always go down this area and then I try to make a decision what I'm going to do. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so today I just decided, well, let's just take it out on the street a little bit, see how it goes. We'll pedal a little bit, uh, we'll throttle a little bit, see if this torque sensor is any good. Overall, you know, for my test for the last two days, it's actually pretty good. There have been uh, bikes that were torque sensor type bikes that uh, I didn't really have a good time with, but this one seems okay, yeah. I mean, I don't think I can get it to the 28 miles an hour while pedaling, but um, I do have that ability with the throttle. <laughs> because again, this is one of those bikes that kind of skates the law a little bit. It, 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 it does 28 pedaled, but it also does 28 throttled. All right, do I turn here? I think I turn here, let's turn here. <laughs> Now you might ask, Russ, did you get a second battery? <laughs> a lot of people have asked me that. Uh, no, I didn't get a second battery. I didn't ask for it initially. I figured, let me see how the bike is first. Let's, let's see if it's a product that I like or not. If I like it, and um, if it's one that I think I'm gonna take for far distances, then yeah, maybe I'll ask at that time. And if I don't like it, then what's the point, <laughs> right? So uh, overall, I tend to, I tend to like it. Now, the biggest issue, again, as, as I mentioned in other videos about second batteries is this, how do you bring it with you, right? Because it's a fairly long battery, because I mean, it's a 20 amp hour battery and most of these 20 amp hour batteries are fairly long. Okay, let's stop here first. Let's make sure we can get through with these cars. There's quite a few cars here. I'm going to be taking a left, so just putting my arm out, letting people know that I will be eventually turning left. Okay, now we can go. <laughs> so how, how, do you, how do you transport that? that? And this is the thing that I said on that one video about, you know, some things to let manufacturers know is it would be great if manufacturers would make, um, not, I'm not talking a bag, but an actual box, like a security box, that you can put your battery in and strap that somehow to the rear rack. Better yet, if it clipped onto the rear rack, you know, made for it, that would be even better. But, you know, that might be too proprietary. But, you know, but a battery box. And uh, it's not so that you can, you know, keep it plugged in or anything like that. It's just that when you wear out one battery from the ride, you just take the battery off the bike, put it back in the, in the box, and take the other battery out of the box and put that in the bike. That's perfectly fine doesn't take away that much time right but then and then we know that the uh, the batteries are safe for transport otherwise how do you how do you transport a second battery it's always an issue to, to, to deal with so yeah maybe uh, maybe companies will start thinking about that Okay, <laughs> yeah, the brakes are pretty good, you know, um, they're textural hydraulic brakes. They, they have 160 uh, millimeters on the um, rotor. Some of them are 180s, this one's 160, so I kind of thought, yeah, maybe this is not going to stop as well, but hey, it stops perfectly fine. So maybe you don't always need to have 180s. Typically, the bigger the rotor is, uh, the better your chances of stopping harder and faster. But no, I have not had any problems. But these are Tektro brakes, so we kind of know it's going to be 
pretty decent already. His Tetro brand is usually pretty reliable. At least they have been for me. So yeah, we have no uh, specific purpose of where to go, but I'm just going down some of the streets I've done in the past. I think we're in uh, Arlington Heights now, in, in that general area. Just kind of testing things out. So what about ghost pedaling? Yeah, you can ghost pedal this thing. <laughs> Typically we don't want that. We, we want uh, where we're pedaling and we're actually making some headway and not feeling like we're pedaling really fast and hard and not getting anywhere. Um, I think if, uh, if the gear ratios were changed a little bit, that would be better. I don't know how many teeth it has on the, on the rear or what it has on the front. I wasn't gonna sit there and count the teeth. But yeah, you, you do do a little bit of ghost pedaling here. I think if I think if I had something that was a little more um, ability, I might be able to get to 28 miles per hour. But to do it now, you have to kind of hit it harder. You know, you got you got to do it fast and hard in order to get to the 28 while pedaling. Oh, I also added a, um, a water bottle cage here. You might notice it's kind of tilted forward, and that's because there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of cable stuff here and I didn't want that hitting the bottle so I kind of leaned it forward a little bit and then tied it down with zip ties. I use a um, you know a standard bottle holder zip tie it to the uh, front basket. I do that for almost all of my bikes. That frees up the area where your where your feet would typically go and on this on this uh, you know when you're stepping over it but on this bike there is no ability to put any type of bottle cage. There's no uh, bottle cage bosses for you to uh, to screw it onto. So you, you, you do have to do something you know, like zip tying or something like that. I think the forward lean might be a little bit much for this particular bottle because uh, this is a pretty long bottle. I don't know, can you see that? And so the weight of it kind of leans a little too far. You know, this is, you, you have other bottles that are shorter. I have one of those too, but I just grabbed this long one. <laughs> but I think uh, for this bike, I would use the shorter bottle. So we've been riding about almost 20 minutes now, according to uh, according to the app. I know you guys can't really see it um, while I'm uh, riding, but I can see it perfectly fine. I can see the display screen and, and the app. I can see it. Uh, it's really bright. Um, what time is it now? It's 12:11 p.m. So we're in the the, the height of the the sun, right? still sniffling. It's still a little chilly, but it's not so bad. It's about 60 degrees or so, 61, 62 degrees. It's going to rain tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we get some good weather and then we don't get some good weather. It's just the way it is. Now you might be wondering, what happened to the other bike? You know, I said that we would probably do the uh, the U free bike as our first bike of the season, but no, I've been waiting for uh, for baskets to be delivered to me. I wanted to show you guys what the basket looks like. Um, although we we had baskets on the other bikes from them, um, I ended up selling that off with the bikes, so I didn't have any more baskets. <laughs> so uh, I, I had to request to get baskets, and it's, it's taken a little bit of time to get them. So because of that, they got pushed off until um, uh, maybe a week later. And I'm supposed to be getting uh, a basket in today, I believe. But uh, I think only the front basket's coming in. I think they're out of stock of rear baskets right now. So we, we have to just kind of wait for that to come in. But I'll, I'll, you know, if the front basket comes in, I'll, I'll start the review without it. And maybe show you guys uh, a photo of the, uh, of the rear basket from the other review when I had the City Robin and City Robin X. It's perfectly fine, it's the same thing. <laughs> they, have a, they have a nice clip-on type basket that goes on there.
All right, so where are we at right now? We're at 86% uh, doing uh, a lot of throttling, but also, also pedaling as well. Oh, here's an interesting story. I always have stories for you guys. So I was doing the review of this bike, as I usually do in the same area I usually do, right in front of that water. And uh, a guy's walking towards me, and uh, I, was, I was putting away my camera gear and stuff. I was pretty much finished for that before I started doing the riding portion of, of the review. So as I'm fiddling with that, the guy walks up, and as he's passing me, he stops and says, thank you for your service. <laughs> That is not the first time somebody mistaken me for a police officer. No, I mean, if you think about it, I've got a helmet on, I've got uh, a yellow safety vest on, my bike is kind of big and intimidating. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I mean, uh, I did work in law enforcement in the past, but I was not a police officer. I was an evidence technician, of course. So I just said, uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know what else to, I didn't know how to answer that. So uh, I didn't want to make him feel bad. He'll probably go home and tell all his friends, yeah, I saw this cop on an e-bike. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> He's wrong, Russ is never wrong. He told you guys that. <laughs> Uh, let's go this way. I think we've gone this way before. Yeah, let's go this way. <laughs> we usually go this way, then I turn around. I think that's usually what happens. See, the thing is, you're a creature of habit. You do the same things over and over and over again. This road is a little hacked up. I can see on the road, uh, it's got potholes and everything. It's a story of Chicago. We, we get a lot of potholes because of the winter and then uh, sometimes, you know, the, the guys are uh, salting the, the streets and then the plows come by to plow the streets and it just chops up the entire asphalt. It cracks from the weather and everything, so... Yep, that's what happens. Okay, I got a truck behind me, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit here. All right, where are we? Let me look up ahead. Camp McDonald. Well, we'll, uh, we'll go past this. Now, because I'm throttling quite a bit, I'm sure we're eating up battery power because of it. Typically, if you throttle, you will eat up more battery than if you pedaled. Let's help it out a little bit. I'll do a little bit of pedaling. I told you guys, too, that you know last year I didn't pedal much at all on camera because uh, I'd get winded really quickly because I wasn't in the best shape. And, of course, then we found out later that, you know, I had high blood pressure, I got diabetes and all that kind of stuff going on. Kind of explains some of the some of the reasons why I had some issues going on, right? So, uh, so this year I plan to do a little bit more pedaling, but not a whole lot <laughs> on camera. That is okay, not a whole lot on camera. Because uh, you know, if I if I pedal too much and I go too fast or whatever, and pedal hard, that is. Um, I will get winded. It won't sound too good on, on camera. All right, where's this uh, street? Oh, this is Rand Road. Yeah, we're not going to do this. This is where we usually turn around. <laughs> let's see if there's any cars coming. No cars coming, so let's uh, just hobble along here. As you know, I don't typically do U-turns very well, so I don't chance it. I don't want to fall. So I will usually hobble along to make the turn for a U-turn especially with fat tire bikes for me. I, if it was a commuter bike, yeah, no problem, I could do it. But for fat, for fat tire bikes, maneuverability is usually not as great for some reason. 
and so uh, yeah, I don't I don't chance I don't I don't chance anything with my knee, as you know, because after having the knee replacement, um, I don't I don't need to to chance that on that knee. Yeah, this is this is typically every every time we do this. This is usually what I end up doing anyway. I usually end up turning around right there and coming right back out. We will eventually go far other places, uh, but uh, not today. I just wanted to get a basic feel for uh, for the bike on the road, and it's it's doing pretty good. Now I mentioned too that I have a scooter review that I have to do um, that will be coming up soon and I was, I was thinking of doing that today but I thought more about it and I said no. <laughs> I think for the scooter uh, I'd rather have a, a clearer chance of less cars on the road. Uh, we're not allowed to ride scooters on our bike paths in this area. so. Um, I either have to do it in a parking lot, an empty parking lot, or I have to do it on the road. So I figured um, a weekend might be better because there should be a little bit less cars, hopefully, you know, if, if it's like on a Sunday or something. Yeah, I just got hit in the face by a, by a butterfly. <laughs> oh, speaking of in insects, if you listen to the video of the review of this bike, you might hear as I'm passing through the forest preserve areas, uh, the cicadas, yeah, you know that there's there's cicadas that are uh, are out this year, especially in the. Uh, oops, sorry about that. I'm trying to pull a handkerchief out here. Yeah, I'm still uh, sniffling and doing all sorts of stuff here. Um, let's go forward a little bit. So, uh, so you could hear the cicadas um, making all that chirping sound. We're going to have a lot of cicadas this year. Illinois gets a lot of it, and of course, this is the year that they all come out for that 17-year thing. I think I think it's 17 years. Every 17 years, I remember the very first time I ever heard that was when I had moved to a certain area and I was doing um, the North Branch Trail. I could hear the stuff making all these noises. I go, what is that? And then you start seeing them. Um, they're big bugs. Yeah, one actually hit me on the <laughs> on my uh, on my chest when I was riding uh, for that review. They're they're basically harmless, but they're big. You know, they're they're big bugs. They don't do anything to you. They come out, they mate, then they die. <laughs> but we're gonna hear that all throughout the entire summer. So this year. Um, I'll probably be running over a bunch of dead ones <laughs> while I'm on the bike. So if you hear it this year and you go, what is all that noise? That's what the noise is. Yeah, they make a lot of big chirping sounds. Oh, okay. Where are we at? Palatine Road already again. Can I pass this and go to something else? I, I can't go on Palatine Road, as you know. Um... Let's go forward because we're eventually going to have to cross it anyway. I just don't know where else it goes into. Yeah, well, we will find out this time. What road are we on? I don't know. Let's hit the map function. There's a map function on here. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I just hit the map. You could actually plot out your route too, I think, on this thing. So it tells you exactly where you are. Let's move up a bit. Well, looks like the weather is getting better. We're going to finally start being able to start getting out and doing things. Oh, here's an interesting thing. As you guys know, I've been taking my blood pressure all the time and checking my diabetes and all that. Well, I decided to check the blood pressure before going out on the uh, review yesterday. And then the moment I came home, I said, let's take the blood pressure again 
to see if exercising helps your blood pressure, and it does. Yeah, I mentioned that the upper number, you know, is, for me, typically is around like 140, 145 over maybe 80, 85, something like that, right? Well, I, uh, I took the measurement, it was typically around in that area, and when I came back home, it was down to, I think, what was it, 119 over, I don't remember what the bottom number was, 76 or something? I don't know. A friend of mine was saying, uh, oh, we just passed the, uh, oh, I should be turning here. We just passed the, uh, the entrance to the uh, Prospect Heights Trail. <laughs> okay, now I know. So anyway, I, uh, a friend of mine was saying, well, wouldn't that number go up since you're exercising and stressing out more? But apparently it's helping my, my uh, high blood pressure if I exercise. That's what they say. The more you exercise, your, your blood pressure gets better, right? So I think that was the best blood pressure reading I had since all this happened. And I can attribute that for being outside and actually pedaling my bike and doing things. So hopefully, now that the weather is better, hopefully my blood pressure will be better because I can then exercise better on, uh, on the bikes. So these torque sensor bikes, you know, from Free Deer and from others, should help me. There you go. E-bikes do help for exercise. <laughs> now I mentioned that the uh, seat post height on this bike is not ideal for me. I'm actually even uh, I'm even one inch higher than I'm supposed to be uh, on the on the uh, seat tube because there's a minimum insertion height, right? I'm a, about an inch higher than it should be, and even so, I'm still not at the ideal. Um, ideal setting for me so I have to make some decision whether to just leave it alone deal with it or go out and purchase another seat post and maybe at the same time change out the saddle I'm not sure I know I have so many bikes at this point do I really need to make every bike exactly 100% perfect and maybe the answer is no um, because we don't keep these bikes forever, right? Eventually I, I will have to move certain bikes along to make room for other bikes. I still haven't made a decision which bikes will be going. I know that some have to go this year because new ones are coming in now. I just don't have space to keep them all. I feel bad about that because I would like to keep them all. <laughs> I would. There's a lot of them that I really like and I hate to kind of give them up. But I know I can't. I know eventually uh, you'll have to move it on to somebody else. Let them enjoy it. I mean, really, how, how, many, how many bikes do I really need? Personally, that is, right? So yeah, expect that there will be some sales going on. And again, whatever I end up selling, I, I can't ship these again. So people have to come out to the northwest suburbs of Chicago to pick them up if they want one of my bikes. But you get a good deal. Those who have purchased from me before will tell you it's, it's, it's a fair deal, so. All right. I must be getting more and more used to the areas because uh, I didn't use my map to, to, uh, to guide me. I didn't use uh, anything like that. I kind of know where I'm going at this point. I do have a terrible sense of direction for those of you who are new. And those of you who have been with me for a while, you all know that. <laughs> I can get lost really fast. So the GPS has been the best thing in the world for me, you know, just having something like a GPS. Let me move over to this lane because we're going to have to take a left here. Yeah, I bought my first GPS when I was shooting weddings. Yeah, because as you know, I was a professional photographer for a while. Quite a long while, in fact. <laughs> 30 years <laughs> and uh, you know between uh, weddings and law enforcement and all that kind of stuff but basically to get to the weddings I found that I uh... oh, hold on you guys are cutting concrete you can see all the dust 
to get to the weddings, I needed a GPS in order to find the places easily. Some of these churches are in different areas of uh, the Chicago general area. And um, yeah, pulling out a map and mapping it out was, was tough. So when the GPS came out, I said, yeah, I gotta buy one of these things. So I bought myself a, here, here's what I bought. I bought a, actually an HP Hewlett Packard, um, kind of like a Palm Pilot. Remember those things? Well, that thing had an option to add on a GPS unit to it. So I used that for a while, and then eventually I got a standard GPS unit, you know. But I think the GPS really revolutionized my ability to get out and go places. Because uh, just following a map and looking at the map while you're making decisions, turn here, turn there, you know, that's, that's hard to do. I used to actually write out the directions, which streets to turn, and then you got to really look at the street names and everything. It's too difficult. GPS came along, yeah, it tells you, right? Turn in 500 feet, you know, it has little uh, chimes that tell you that you're right at the spot you need to turn. So yeah, it was the best thing and still the best thing for me. I mean, I use uh, the Apple Maps in my uh, Apple CarPlay all the time. I wouldn't be able to find anything if I didn't have that. So yeah, global positioning system. All right, how's our uh, thing? We've, we've been riding 38 minutes. I hope my batteries haven't died out. My top speed was 26.3 miles per hour. We've gone a little over 10 miles or so, something like that. So yeah, overall, I would say uh, the Free Deer Eden does a very good job. Equally as, as good as any of the other top bikes that we've had. And at the price, $15.99, can't beat that. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention, there's a $100 discount for you guys. <laughs> if you go to the affiliate link that's in the description of my video, um, you'll see that they, uh, they actually have a $100 discount code for you. This is Russ100. Use that code, get the, uh, the $200 off, of course, because uh, it's on sale right now at $15.99. Get another hundred dollars off. Put in the one, uh, the Russ 100 code in there so that they know it came from me. And then uh, to get there, of course, click on the affiliate link. You know, if you just go straight to the free deer site and then you put the Russ 100, I don't get anything from that. Uh, if you if you use the the affiliate link to to arrive there first and then put the Russ 100 code in, then you get the hundred dollars off and I get a little commission as well. So I appreciate that. That's what's keeping me going. So, a lot of guys have done that uh, in the past for other bikes, so I appreciate it. All you new guys, if you're looking at new bikes and you want to get one of these free deers, there you go. And if, you know, like I said, if the uh, step through version is not what you want, they do have a step over version of the bike as well. Same price, <laughs> same price basically. You know, you, and just add in the uh, fenders and uh, add in the uh, front and rear rack it brings it up to the same price of what the uh, step through version is because step through includes those things the step over you don't have to put it on if you don't put it on you save hundred dollars but if you do put it on then the cost is the same as uh, the step through version of the bike so eh, that's fair right all right now here's another interesting thing uh, free dare told me that uh, they have it on Amazon as well. I think a lot of companies put it on Amazon, but I noticed the price was lower. So I asked them, I says, hey, how come it's lower? And he says, well, you have to pay for shipping on Amazon. <laughs> Let me check my, uh, my thing here. Yeah, it's still going, so we'll keep you going. <laughs> Just checking my audio recorder. Yeah, um, they include free shipping uh, when you buy it on their own site. So by the time uh, you buy on Amazon and you uh, you pay for shipping, it comes out about, about the same price uh, of buying it from their site. 
Plus, you cannot use the Rust 100 code on the Amazon. <laughs> so you might as well buy it. <laughs> you might as well buy it through my affiliate link. So everybody benefits at that point. <laughs> yeah, I would recommend this bike. This is, a, this is a good bike. Yeah, everything about it seems to be where it needs to be. All right, we're gonna wait here. All right, we're gonna go. All right, I think that should be enough for today. <laughs> it's a long video as it is. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Things are moving up. We're at about, I don't know, about 18,500 at this point. So um, this year we should break the uh, 20,000 uh, mark, I believe. It's just a matter of time, right? Things are picking up now for uh, e-bike videos because uh, the weather's getting better. I'll be out there more often now, as long as it doesn't rain on me or have uh, something about the weather that makes it uh, difficult. I mean, right now, the wind is so high, I can't even hear myself talking. You know, how the wind kind of howls against your ears when you're moving. Yeah, I can't hear a word I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time.